So we've had four symbols so far. We've had and, or, if then, and if and only if. Other names for these are dot, wedge, horseshoe, and triple bar. And the fancy schmancy names for them are conjunction, disjunction, conditional, and biconditional. So now I've got the names for all those four. There's one more idea that we haven't talked about yet, and that is the idea of negation. This is indicated by a little tilde, which is like a little squiggly, and it means that whatever it's right in front of is false. So if I wanted to say that I don't have an apple, that is like saying it is false that I do have an apple. So we put the A for I have an apple, and then we put the little squiggly tilde right in front of it to indicate that that's not true. I don't have an apple. So this one, again, has three names. It's either means not, you can call it a tilde, or you can call it a negation. So not, tilde, negation. We can add that to our list of four, and that brings us up to five symbols. Now, here's a little bit about the rules for putting the symbols between the letters. The first four symbols we talked about, and, or, if, then, if, and only if, those ones have to go between ideas. So if the only ideas we have are A and B, they can only go between the A and the B. Or maybe on one side we have A and B, on the other side we have C and D. Now we've got two compound ideas. What we can do with those is we can stick parentheses around each one. So we have parentheses around the A and B, and parentheses around the C and D. And then we can stick another symbol, one of those first four, in between those two sets of symbols. So as you can see, when you get large groupings of the symbols, you have to set them off from each other with parentheses. So things can be only grouped in groups of two two letters inside of parentheses with a symbol between them. And not, instead of going between two ideas, it only goes in front of one idea, whatever idea it is negating or making negative. So if we want to say A and B and then we change our minds and we say, no, okay, A and B is not true. Well, you take A and B, stick parentheses around it, and then you put a not out in front. So when I'm reading these and I don't know what the letters mean, the easiest way for me to understand it is in front of every letter I see, I just substitute, I put in the words, you have A. So like I'm talking through to myself, I'm talking through a problem, and I see an A, I say, you have an A. If I see an A dot B, I say to myself, you have an A and you have a B. Or if I see C or D, C wedge D, I say you have a C or you have a D. And so I'm really kind of thinking of the letters as things that I have, like on a table in front of me or something. And that helps me sort of set the ideas apart. So I think that's pretty much it for a general introduction to propositional logic. What we have is we have simple ideas that are replaced by capital letters in the alphabet. And then we have the five symbols, and, or, if, then, if, and only if, and not, that we put between, or in the case of the not symbol, we put that in front of the letters. And in that way, we express more complex ideas than just one letter could represent. So now that we've seen how we can create these propositions, these little ideas with these symbols and the letters, we're going to take a look at how we can create entire arguments with them. So that brings me to my next topic, which is the topic of natural deduction, which is where we have a few of these symbol propositions and we try to reason our way through them to get to a conclusion. So, 
on we go to our next topic.